All right, here's a question I have for you. Let's let's assume for a second that Boston closes this out okay. in, the ne- in the next couple games, all right? In the next couple games. I think if it goes six back to Dallas, it gets interesting. Certainly if there's a game seven, like, it's super interesting. But let's assume it goes four or five. Okay. D- Boston right now on the season, including playoffs, is 79 and 20. They're 15 and two in the playoffs. Uh, They have, uh, I think, the uh, top five or six point differential, top five or six net rating all time in the regular season. Why do you think people are so quick to dismiss this Boston Celtics team as an all time team? That's a great question. I think they wouldn't say they're all time yet just because they're young. Like, they're really, really young, and it's hard to say, okay, Tatum's been in the finals twice now, Brown's been twice now. Don't forget, just a few years ago, people were like, break them up. They're not good. And I'm like, are they crazy? But to see, like, they've, they've been to the finals now to, at an early age. If Boston goes on to win this thing, and Tatum, we're going to look at Tatum differently. We're going to see all the things he has done and accomplished already at this tender age, 26 or 25 or whatever he is. That's why I think people will look at it. And we're in, we're in a time now where everything's happening like this. Like, I was just on Twitter fighting with people. Like, they're like, Tatum's not bringing it. I'm like, if, if he was not, if his team wasn't up 2-0, I can understand it. But he's averaging 17, 10, and 8. Yeah, he's not shooting well, but they're up 2-0. The name of the game is to win the game. And, and going back, just hit me again, going back to what you said for Dallas to have a chance to get back in this, they have to keep the game close. Because what scared me about Boston all time and all year was, they're almost like Mike Tyson. They're up 15, the ball is hopping, it's moving fast, you're running out of defenders. When it gets tight, they slow down and start going a lot of one-on-one. And it, they look like two different teams. And so with that, that's Dallas's only chance. That's their only chance all year is to beat them, is to keep the game close and hope that they go one-on-one so much that it hurts them. We saw tonight, let's take the context out of the third quarter run and then Dallas's comeback. And let's take the context of, hey, this is the moment that we have all talked about before the series, we said, Hey, if it's late game and it's clutch time, Dallas has the advantage. Now Luca fouled out early in clutch time. I get that Boston's execution. You know, there were some stagnant possessions with Tatum ISOs and and what I would think are tough, bad shots. Uh, But Jalen Brown, Derek white, drew holiday, all making plays that's been consistent throughout the season. You look at Jalen Brown, even Porzingis who didn't play tonight, Jalen Brown, Porzingis, uh, drew holiday, Derek white late game have been excellent. The Celtics clutch rating playoffs, regular season has been excellent, excellent offense, defense, whatever. There's still those possessions where we scratch our head and say, Oh, that, that, that wasn't great. So I think some of it, some of it is the aesthetics of late game. Some of it is, this is why I think they're so great, but it's why I th- think some people can't quite grasp them is they do play a different way. You brought up the cross matches. They are so, they've been like this all season. They don't match up by position. And some no. of that is because they have the personnel to do it, right? Right. Drew Holiday has guarded every freaking position yes. in volume the whole season, right? They, they, you think Jalen Brown's going to guard this guy? No, he's going to guard this guy. You think Tatum's going to guard? No, he's going to guard this guy. So defensively, they, they, they do things to muck it up a little bit. Offensively, I think because of the volume of three point shooting, uh, the, the uh, amount of ISO frequency, the amount of post up frequency, they look different. When they're really rolling and the ball's moving and it's swing, 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 it's like that's as beautiful as basketball can look. But then aesthetically, they have these moments where it's it's not good. And I think that's some of it. The other point I would make is when we think about the greatest teams of all time, we are talking about all-timers and clear 1A superstars that are attached to those teams. I don't like, I think Tatum is as he's made three first team all NBAs in a row, two of which came by position. So he was 
you know, right, for two the years, the one of the right. two best forwards in the NBA. Mm-hmm. But people don't want to give him credit as like a real tier one, you know, Michael, Kobe, Luka, Jokic, whatever, Kawhi, Steph, all those guys, right? And I, I, th- I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think it's okay to say that. So because they don't have that guy, we're, we, we're quick to dismiss them. I would make the argument in terms of a team and the collective, and Doris has talked about this a bunch during the finals, in terms of a collective and a team, this is like as good as it gets in the NBA. I, a great example of that would be the 14 Spurs team. That they yes. came they came back from the disappointment of, of 13, 13 and yeah. and blitz the heat in the finals four, and won 4-1. Four, four, one. Yeah. Like that was about the team. So yes, maybe maybe like at the very top it's not the best we've ever seen, but in terms of the team, this is as good as it gets in basketball. For sure. And to that Spurs point you just made, they were they were playing like beautiful basketball for 99% of the game. So it was easy to embrace, right? Everybody's touching the ball. Tim Duncan, we know is a clear number one, the best power forward of all time, one of the best players of all time. But he did that over time. I'm not sure we were saying, you know, the 99 Spurs team was an all-time great because he was early in his career. But that 14 team was ridiculous. And go back to 13 when they lost, and Tim Duncan's like, we'll be back next year and we'll get, we'll get the job done. Like, so they were like something different. This Boston Celtics team, I think with the youth, I think we'll appreciate them if they can go 4-0 and, you know, all those things a little bit later on. But to your point, it's still discussion. Where's this guy in in all time? Where's he at in today's game? Where's this person at? But I don't think they care right now, to be honest with you. And I I think what else they did was they got more mature when they got Holiday, White, and Porzingis. Like, besides the talent, they got more mature. So now the possessions they had when they went to the finals before – Five minutes left in the game when they play Golden State, they may have two or three bad turnovers in a row. Now it may just be one. And maybe some of that's their experience of Brown and Tatum going through that and those younger guys. But it's also holiday, hey, fellas, you know, and they know he's a champion. They know he plays with no agenda but to win. Derek White, hey, fellas, this moment right here, we have to get a good one. Just hearing that, we know how important you were that, you know, your second half of your career. I try to be that. We know how important that is just to have that vet say something to trigger something and just change the tide of where things are going. So no, they may not appreciate them right now, but honestly, I don't think they care because honestly, they may feel like, you know what, if we win this one, we can do this for the next two or three years. And then people will have to give us our justice. You know, I, I hate making predictions. I really do. Um, You're about to make one? No, there's no, I'm not, I'm not going to make one. I, I think there's always receipts on predictions, right? And, and the one thing you and I have both learned in playing in the NBA and being around um, this level of the sport for so long is like, you don't really know what the main problem you have to solve until at least a game, sometimes maybe two games. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to make predictions. And a number of people, I mean, I was, I live online. So the number of people were like, yes, you do. Yeah. They were like, yeah, the Mavs, Mavs and six, Mavs and five, right? I mean, Nick Wright, he said the Celtics record and point differential say they're an all-time team. The eye test says they are not close to that. We shall see what's what here in 10 days, Mavs in five. And obviously Nick is wrong, like another uh, a number of other people. And I, I think, the and I keep saying this, the problem with the predictions and the discourse around this Celtics team is that too much of it is based on past performances. And we haven't actually, we collectively, I'm not saying me, I'm not going to put myself in that. We collectively have not witnessed what we've watched this year and recognized just how fucking good this team is. 